This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, did you know I love this movie? I know you love that movie. I think. <laughs> I'm curious to see what movie you love. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 279 for Sunday, the 14th of March, 2021. It's fucking pie day. Pizza for dinner for everybody, because I know ain't nobody out there making fucking pies today. Uh, this is the show two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. Daylight savings time is bullshit. It, it really is, dude. I um, I was mad. I was actually awake uh, fairly late last night, and yep. I looked at the clock, and it yep. said it was 1.53 a.m., mm-hmm. and uh, I looked at the clock again a few minutes later, and it was after three. And I'm like, what the... Oh, God damn it. It's that time of year again. I had a similar experience. I got in the shower at 1.53 a.m. and got out at 3.05 and was like... <laughs> World's longest shower. I it's, I didn't beat off in the shower. Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> like, it's bullshit. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I, I like saving. We go over this twice a year. Plus during the streamathon, so I'm, I'm going to save everybody the majority of my rant. But it's fucking dumb. It needs to go away. I don't care which time zone we switch to. If we make daylight savings time permanent, or daylight saving time permanent, or if we mm-hmm, go to mm-hmm. standard time permanent, I don't give a shit. Just fucking do it. I, just stop changing it. Just stop. Yeah. I, I have step enough. step I have one enough. is to stop fucking changing the stupid shit we're doing now. Exactly. The, the, yeah, I have enough. Uh, problems with with getting enough sleep and things like that and this this spring forward thing just makes it so much worse it it guarantees that i'm going to get one less hour of sleep i mean i know that's true for everybody to a point right but but i it guarantees that i'm going to have instead of like 5 hours of sleep i'll get 4 and here's the I thing mean, if you go from 8 to 7 like that's not the worst thing in the world but like 5 to 4 is significant here's the thing though it, it, people say well you make up for it in the Oh, no, you don't. You don't no, you, you don't. don't. No. The spring one is always the one where you're up late and you end up getting fucked. The the damn other one, you just end up waking up early because it, it like like fall back. Everybody ends up falling asleep at a decent time that day. It's like the one t- one day in the entire country just <laughs> falls asleep at a normal fucking time and then wakes up an hour early. Like, what the fuck is going on? It's complete bullshit. Just can we? Oh, my gosh. Yes, let's let's stop doing that. Uh, it's, um, it's stupid. So, something that something I don't want to stop doing, though I'm I'm having a blast with this is uh, W. Scott is one's podcast Cinemavention. Yep. Uh, you and I were uh, were early guests on that show mm-hmm. uh, later uh, separately, right? Mm-hmm. I think you were on the first episode, mm-hmm. and I was on like the third or something like that. Um, and then recently, like you and I got to repeat that experience. We were both on Cinemavention this week. On the same, well, we recorded the same day. That's in, right. In fact, yeah. we, because because my Monday recording time had to slip to Tuesday, you actually recorded episode eleven before I recorded episode ten. Yes, yes, and I <laughs> and I saw that on the schedule. I noted that, and I was going to. Ma- I completely forgot during during the recording for mine. I was going to make a joke about how uh, your you know your opinions on episode. 10 were were terrible or something like that um even though it could be because they're gonna you know they're gonna air in that order mm-hmm. but you hadn't actually recorded yet and i completely spaced it uh, but i had a blast though i got to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time pulp fiction yeah and oh boy that was so much fun i could have talked another two hours probably about that movie and not run out of material i g- had the pleasure of talking about the classic uh action movie aliens Game over, man. And that's it. That's that's like <laughs> the most memorable part I, of that movie. <laughs> I I love that movie too. That's 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 it's, a movie that I can throw on just pretty much any time. It's just it's great. It's got great action, uh, memorable lines. Um, it's just cool. Ah, but it, uh, but but there it, it has some big problems. Some yeah. big and I, well, I, problems. I can't wait to. I can't wait to listen to your episode because it's actually yeah. been a minute since I've seen Aliens. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys identified as being problematic. It's one word, pacing. 
the pacing in that movie it's 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 a two hour 17 minute movie and it should have been about an hour 30 mm. Mm. like there's just certain things that just don't flow and yeah it, it does a decent job of of covering for the original but um but yeah any, anything more than that if you want to hear what what rank i gave it out of uh thumbs up or thumbs down you have to listen to episode 10 of cinema Prevention. right on i i yeah um yeah and and listen to listen to episode 10 about pulp fiction as well there's you there's mean some really you mean 11 or 11 that's what i meant crank it up to 11 that's what yeah. I meant. <laughs> um but can't you just man, make that 10 but then it won't so, be 11 11 is louder that's right. Um, so I I made an interesting discovery um, a day or two ago. So in in preparation for for this week's episode, I, I was I was researching some things about Steven Spielberg, and uh, you know his his production company. You know the name of it? Mm. Amblin Entertainment. Yeah, Amblin Entertainment. So I never really gave much thought about wh- where that name came from. Like, what does Amblin mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I discovered that uh, he made a short film way back in 1968, before he was known to really anyone. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I came across the film Amblin on YouTube because oh. the, the movie has not been released anywhere. Like, it... it there's no DVD of it. It's not on any streaming service, really. Uh, so I found a... Um, this is really starting to piss based... me off. Oh, your uh, mic boom is uh, giving you a problem? Yeah, okay. Continue. Um, anyway, so on YouTube, I found somebody's um, uh, terrible uh, rip of the film. I don't know how they got you, a copy You found of a bootleg of an unreleased movie? That's right. And it's it's a 26, I believe, 26 minute uh, little short film. Uh, it's basically about two hitchhikers in the 60s, um, a, a boy and a girl hitchhiker uh, that just kind of um, meet on the road, like out in the middle of the desert. Mm. And they're trying to get somewhere. And um, it's a um, it's kind of like a silent film. There's no dialogue. Uh, there is music and then you can hear like, you know, them laughing and, and there's, uh, you know, like the sound effects and everything are there, but there's no dialogue. Um, and it's super interesting. Um, I, I, I put a link in the, the uh, Twitch chat the, and we'll have a link in the show notes, uh, but, um, I, I encourage everybody if you, if you like Spielberg, I encourage you to check it out and just let us know what you think think about it what are your thoughts uh but this is the 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 short film that actually got him recognized by hollywood and and they gave him a chance to direct like hollywood productions based on the merits of this short film so i'm curious what people think about it i will definitely watch it i I, uh, it's going to take some some convincing yeah, well, I mean, it's only twenty six minutes, so it's not it's not terribly long. Um, uh, that, but that's the, only that's only two of my WrestleMania videos. Oh, you watch WrestleMania too? Oh my gosh, it's so good! It's everything I hate about wrestling made in a fun way. Oh, that's great! I <laughs> WrestleMania is pretty fun. I I watch uh, now. I don't watch every video. I yeah. just uh, occasionally browse the channel. Yeah. Uh, but WrestleMania and What Culture Wrestling are the two uh, the two places I go to get my wrestling fix. Yeah, it, it, because it's not it's not wrestling. It's not the drama and everything. It's kind of like a I wouldn't say behind the scenes because it's definitely retrospective and not like you know uh, concurrent with the events. But it's a it's a it's a it's a nice little look at some of the funner aspects and some of the more interesting aspects of how wrestling works mm. and some of the, some of the dramas and things like that. Plus, you know me, I'm all about watching people get hurt and they got highlight videos on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Um, one more point uh, that I need to make. Uh, do you notice anything behind me? There's something different behind me. Mm. It's a- um, it's a game I've been playing with you for a while that you just didn't know I was playing with you. <laughs> that seems pretty standard, Amos. Um, so I see um, 
I see your pops are out of the packages. Well, yeah, because I don't collect for money, because fuck all that. Right, right. Um, it, it does have to do with the pops. Yeah, um... Yeah, no. Uh what what should I be what should I be noticing? Uh right uh, for the video people I'm going to point to it. Right there what do you see? Oh, uh that looks like Din Djarin. Yes. It's it's okay. it, it's the pop known as Mando with Child. Nice. Or with the Child. <clears throat> that is up there now. That's a new re- that's a recent addition up there. Uh because I have a new one in front of me. I keep I keep my most recent pop directly in front of me. So my most recent pop is now Skeletor on Throne. Oh, nice. Nice. So I had to pick it up. I found it at Target. I had to pick it up. Uh, so now I have He-Man on uh, 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 Wonder Cat. Battle, Battle, Battle Cat. Cat. There you go. <laughs> uh, Wonder Cat. Wonder Cat. Uh, and I have Skeletor <laughs> on Throne. So now you now you know the game I'm playing with you. So next time you know as soon as you notice Skeletor up top, you know that I've received a new one. Yeah. Cool. Now I'm now I'm gonna be obsessive about that, scanning your background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least you won't be looking at my face anymore. Um <laughs> Hey dude, is is it uh is is it about that time? Yeah, man, smash that button. What time is it? Ken is all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. So, keeping on the Spielberg theme, um, this week's game is called Can You Spell Spielberg? Which, um, if I didn't um, already have it there written out in the show notes, would you know how to spell Steven Spielberg? Yeah. I can guarantee it no, because even looking at the <laughs> show notes, it looks wrong. Exactly. It, like, like I, I, I even screwed up Steven. Like, w- when I wrote it the first time, yeah. I spelled it S-T-E-P-H-E-N, where it's actually a V instead of the P-H. That's one of the most... An, uh, then, that messes me up so often. Like, Stephen Cogswell, anytime I'm emailing him or something like that, like, it's... I ha- I I have to look at old stuff to know which one is which. Like there need <laughs> there needs to be a way to differentiate those two spellings of Stephen. Like it just it kills me. Yeah yeah. All right. Um, so what I'm going to ask you is, did Steven Spielberg direct this film? Oh. Okay. All right. I think it's probably harder than you than you would think, uh, but we're about to find out. All right. Your first movie. Jaws. Now, now these are these are movies he directed, not produced or executive directed, right? Uh, like he has direct. Yeah. So the the question is, did Steven Spielberg direct this film? Okay. Okay. Just making so sure. So he he might have been otherwise involved. Right. Right. And the answer would be no. But if he directed it, the answer is yes. Okay. So your first film is Jaws. Yes. Yes, is correct. <laughs> your next film. Is Hook. Ooh. I'm going to say yes. Okay. And uh, I'm going to tell you that you're correct. Oh. That, of course, is the uh, the movie where Robin Williams, Robin Williams plays old Peter Pan. Right. Um, great movie, by the way. Yeah. I, I think that movie is underrated. Um, all right. Your next film. Who played Hook in that movie? Was that Jeremy Irons? No. That was um uh uh oh geez dustin hoffman <sighs> that's right yes yep. Yep. yep okay he did fantastic yeah in that um okay <clears throat> your third film is uh you went digital what was it lincoln lincoln abraham lincoln I don't think so. Okay. No. That is your first incorrect. Okay. Okay. Response. Fair enough. He, yeah, he did. He did direct Lincoln. That's actually, if you've not seen Lincoln, I, I recommend that one too. That's a that's a really well done film. Is that the one where he's uh, a vampire hunter? No. Then no, I ha- then I then, then I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I I need to see that. Um, 
I know it's going to be campy and goofy and uh, just wild, and I'm pretty sure Spielberg had nothing to do with that film. <laughs> and now you understand the confusion. All right, your next film is Back to the Future. Um, no. Okay, that is correct. Spielberg produced that film. Uh, see, it, that that's, yeah, okay. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis was the uh, director of that one. Okay. Um, Man, chat is not helping me at all tonight. I know, <laughs> I know. Your next film is Ready Player One. Yes. Wait, you did he direct yes. or did he produce? I think he produced that one, so I'm going to say no. You're going to say no, and you would be incorrect. Oh, shit. Yeah, he did, in fact, direct that one, which I I thought was a surprise. I mean, it felt appropriate that he would direct that movie, uh, but I was surprised that that he actually agreed to do it. Mm. Um, have, have you seen the movie or read the book? I've seen the movie. Okay. I recommend reading the book. Um, I know that's the trope, right? Like the book is always better. Yeah. Um, that's not always the case. Um, I think these, I think both of them stand well on their own. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, but this is a, an example where I think the book is uh, better. Um, but the, like you can definitely enjoy them separately because like the puzzles are different in the book versus the movie. So they, they, they have value on their own. Mm. Um, there's also Ready Player Two, which I have not read yet. Mm. Um, ha- hasn't been made into a movie yet. I don't know if it's going to be, but um, um, I'm hearing that the, that book is, is pretty fun to read as well. Anyway, um, OK, your next movie is The Adventures of Tintin. That sounds more like a production movie. Okay, so you're going to say no? No. <laughs> your response is no. Um, and your response is incorrect. Your response is incorrect. Spielberg did direct The Adventures of Tintin. Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I had forgotten that he directed that. I, I forgot that he even had anything at all to do with that movie, let alone directed it. Um, okay, the uh, next film is Gremlins. I believe he directed and produced that movie. And you would be wrong again. <laughs> um, he only produced that one. That was a Chris Columbus director. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Minority Report. He did do that one. He did, in fact, direct that movie. Yeah. The next film is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. <laughs> he says uncertainly. Uh, yes. Well, a, a lot of these, it's hard to know if he directed or produced, but you know he was involved. Like it's. Yep. yep. You know? And then, yeah, like when I was a kid, I used to think that George Lucas directed that movie uh, because the story was written by George Lucas and George Lucas produced it, but Spielberg directed it. So, um, yeah, so you're correct on that one. And your final film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Ooh, I want to say yes, because it is just such an amazing movie. <gasps> Wrong. He did not direct it. No. He was, I think, like an executive producer or something on yeah. that film. Look, his name's, so that his, means his name's got, on the card. You got five out of ten, which means... <laughs> this man has no dick. <laughs> you did not get the D. Nah, sucks for me. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, today's topic, dude. A few weeks ago, you were telling me a movie that I really enjoyed uh, that, that uh, a lot of people haven't seen or didn't like or, or whatnot. And I really enjoyed our conversation on that. So I figured, why not make a whole show about uh, movies that we like that either a lot of people haven't seen or wouldn't necessarily guess that we like them. Mm. So we're not going to talk about like Marvel movies or star Wars or things that are, you know, obviously things that we enjoy. Right. Um, what, what is a, what, what is a movie that, 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 uh, that fits that bill for you? I'm going to, I'm going to come out with the big guns right at the, right at the bat. 
Caveman. Okay. Caveman. Caveman is a 1981 movie starring Ringo Starr. Um, okay. it's it, it's literally just a story about a caveman and his trials as he goes through life. Uh, Dennis Quaid, Shelley Long, you know, like it, it's completely ridiculous. And they go from these hunched over people to accidentally standing upright, and then they start helping other people. And at one point they have to fry an egg. It's got really, really awful claymation and CG and not CGI, but green screening. Um, it's, it's a horrible fucking movie, but every time I watch it, I laugh my ass off. It's so good. I don't know if I've seen this movie. I'm, I'm running down the cast list right now on IMDb and there's some, there's some pretty big names in here, man. Dennis Quaid. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Okay. Um, Tala, now, did you see this? Tala did, Zug, you see this Zug, a, did you see this movie as a kid? <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, it was on yeah. HBO, and then uh, eventually my my aunt Paula recently just bought me the DVD. Oh wow! Yeah. So it's so it's well known, like it, uh, among family. In my family, this yes. They everybody else hates this movie, and I fucking love it. It's so. <laughs> it's just so. It's so awkward. That's amazing. So <clears throat> my first movie also has Dennis Quaid. Uh, this is a 1985 movie called Enemy Mine. Have you ever seen this? I want to say that I have. Like I, it seems very, very familiar. Yeah. So, th so this has Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett Jr. Um, Gossett plays an alien, and uh, this is um. So and Dennis Quaid's like a he's like a soldier for Earth or whatever, mm -hmm. and. The two races are at war, and they end up. Uh, both of them end up crashing on this this alien planet, and uh, so they're both stranded, and they're enemies, right? So they they initially try to kill each other, but then they they uh, separately try to survive the harsh environments or whatever, and then one ends up saving the other, and they decide, okay, we're gonna if we're gonna survive this, we got to work together, and end up becoming friends. And, um, and then it, it goes from, it goes from there and it goes places. And I saw this movie as a kid and I think this was a similar, um, to your experience with caveman. I think this was on HBO Yeah. and I would watch it like every time it came on. And I don't know what it is about that movie, but I like, I had to watch it every time I, I loved it. And I love the story. There's a beauty in the story of, um, in the sense that it, you have a uh, like a predetermined notion of a person or a people, mm -hmm. uh, but then when you actually get to know them and you realize that they're, you know, you're more similar than you are different, and you recognize their humanity. Well, in this case, I mean, it's non-human; it's an alien, right? right? But I mean, the 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 allegory there is that you know you realize the humanity of, of people and um, you can actually learn to love people that you had considered your enemies. And uh, there's something about that, that uh, type of story that really talks to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, and that's, that's, I don't know that I took it away, took that away from it only because I think it's been since I was like eight, since I've seen this movie. <laughs> sure. um, but yeah, uh, your next movie on the other hand has, Quite a different theme to it. <laughs> Tell us about the girl next door. Oh my god! So I don't know. This is like a guilty pleasure movie for me. Like I, I fucking love this movie. So it's, th this movie, it's as close as you can come out. to porn for a teenager <laughs> as possible. This movie came out in two thousand four. Yeah. Um. It it's stars. Alicia Cuthbert, or Alicia Cuthbert, I guess is how you say her name. I think. Yeah. Um, first of all, mm, mm, mm. Um, so this this dude uh, played by Emil Hirsch, he's supposed to be a, a high school student, even though he looks like he's twenty six years old, which I think he probably was. <laughs> uh, this girl moves in next door to him, and she's absolutely beautiful. And she's supposed to be like high school senior age as well, but I'm pretty sure she was like coming up on 30 years old at this point. 
Um, and um, anyway, he he's infatuated with her and they end up um, um, having a bit of a romance. It turns out that she was a porn star for a while. Um, it goes places. Which and, causes uh, me, problems. It, yeah, and in, in, in a uh, an important part to my enjoyment of this film, though, is Timothy Oliphant is in it, and um, if if you don't know Timothy Oliphant, like he is just fantastic in everything that he's in. Um, I, I love that dude as an actor. He's he's great. He's just so much fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, combine combine Oliphant with um, Alicia Cuthbert, and um, I'm there, dude. It, there's just something about the humor in this movie as well. Uh, things like, um, uh, you know, we're a fucking tripod. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's something about the, uh, the dialogue between the three friends, uh, I, that just, it just rings true to me. This movie, um, this movie was supposed to be Alicia's big breakout movie because mm -hmm. she, she had, previously done 24 the first season and a half of 24 and yep. it's kind of where she got her big start in hollywood and she played jack bauer's daughter and yep. um she, she's a great actress this is one of those things where i think i think her appearance has actually held her back because she's basically seen as just the blonde you know yeah, but she's seen she, as a sex symbol when she's trying to be. She wants serious roles. Yeah, she's, and, which is why later on in the twenty four, when she returned to the series, spoiler warning, uh, she actually comes back with dark hair. Like mm -hmm. she wanted to shed a lot of that. Um, at least that's my summation of of what I understand of her career. But she's an amazing actress, and in this movie, just kind of exploited her for one thing and didn't give her yep. a chance for for anything else and. I, I I don't know if it if it's why we didn't see more of her in Hollywood, but um, it's too bad because she's she's pretty amazing. Yep, yep, um, yeah, I, I definitely like her. Uh, my next movie, however, a little different, and this is one that uh, I I think you you could probably tell that I I I like this movie if you know me, but I don't mm -hmm. know if you would understand how much I like this movie. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what are we talking about? This movie is The Born Identity. And that expands to the entire trilogy, the original trilogy. Okay. Um this movie is all the great things. It's a it starts out as a mystery, it turns into an adventure. There's a a hot lady that's almost a romantic interest, but but they managed to keep it professional instead of turning it romantic. Um, and she's played by Julia Stiles, which I think is one of those beautiful women in Hollywood, hmm. um, which you also might not think of about me because she's not my, my typical attractive point, but um, she's amazing. She's she, everybody in this movie just acts so well. And the story is splendid. Um, it's all shot on location. They did a lot of practical effects. There's no like CGI and stuff like that in, in these movies. And it's kind of like Die Hard meets Goonies. You know? <laughs> Goonies? Yeah. Wait, how, wait, what's the Goonies angle? On because the there's angle? clues and they got to keep finding, they got to keep looking for the next thing. And, you know, it's, it's okay. like this. Okay. And, and if, they, if they fail the next task, the result is death. So the only option is to complete the next task. You know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, okay. With like a little bit of Bruce Lee thrown in there for a good measure, the Matrix or some shit. You know, it's just it's just so good and it's so action packed and it's got a great story. And then they expand that out for two more movies and just all of them are amazing, except one part where a certain character dies that made me very sad. Mm. sad yeah, panda. and um, I I like the Bourne movies as well, and also like I'm a big fan of Matt Damon. Yeah. already. Um, and this was yeah. Oh, oh yeah. His... By the way, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and this that movie is kind of like his um like his breakout role into action, I think. Yeah. I don't remember him being in in like um you know, high, high paced you no, know, action. No. Before this, his before big that. movie was uh was uh Oh shit. What was the one with Rob Williams? Um 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 
shoot. Yep. No, it wasn't that shoot. One. It definitely was not shoot. <laughs> um, um, wow. Shit. Well, I am drawing a blank. Yeah, I, I I'm, can see I'm even the movie poster in my. Uh, or no, 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 no. You're you're talking about Goodwill Hunting, right? Yeah, Goodwill Hunting. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of a different movie in my head, but uh, yeah, Goodwill Hunting for for sure. Um, that's a good movie too. It it is. How about them apples? <laughs> uh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So let, let's move on to the next movie on your list because I I had this in my list until I remembered that I've talked about this movie on here before. And so I took it off and I replaced it with enemy mine because mm. I know I haven't talked about enemy mine, or at least I don't remember talking about enemy mine on this show. Um, so this next movie is also one of my favorite movies. It's so good. The last starfighter. Yes. It, I, it combines all the things that I loved as a kid. Playing video games, space, mm -hmm. lasers, aliens, <laughs> impending doom that everyone mm -hmm. in their early teens just felt. Um, it's got a romantic interest that never kind of, you know, it's, it, I want to say it doesn't come to fruition, but it's basically like it, it you don't, it, it's not a sex movie. It's just a romantic interest. Um, it's it's got one kid that's really good at one thing and nobody likes him for anything else except for that one thing that he did that one time and that breaks it open into all the things that he could ever do and he becomes like this interstellar star and yeah it's the fucking doom blossom like come on <laughs> the dude yeah so this <laughs> this movie is it's something of a, a wish fulfillment movie and, um, just like Girl Next Door. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, okay. Um, I didn't think of it like that, but yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, so Alex Rogan, the, the main character, like you said, he, he was really good at this video game, and it turns out that it's a test to be a starfighter, and then yeah. he becomes a starfighter and saves the, the universe. And Now, the, Rogan, the, setting, know, Alex the setting is he lives in like roseman california or some shit like that where it's basically a trailer park and a gas station and that's all there is in town yeah and yep. there's just just one video game this one arcade machine it's not even in an arcade it's like sitting outside in the weather like yeah it's you know it, the people go they get their cherry pops you know and they get <laughs> they get a get a corn dog and a and a and a, a frosty freeze or whatever and they, right. they throw quarters into this machine. And this one kid is like the only one in town that understands how to play this game. Everybody else is like, I got to level three. And he's like, I got to level 583,242.1. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like. Yeah. But he, he, he ends up becoming the hero. And that was like something like I, that was a, a, a continuous dream of mine. Like I, become a starfighter. Like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like that would be that would be perfect. Like I, I God, I wanted that to be me. So now, bad. This or the aviator? Was it aviator, the aviator? The navigator? Whatever one where the oh, kid. Oh, fl flight of the Navi Yeah. Flight of the navigator. Yeah. Oh, oh, last starfighter. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I I hear people refer to the other one all the time, and I'm like, ah, eh, kid, kind of happened to just happen to walk into an alien ship that allowed him in. Like yeah. you know, that's not a big thing. This this has got video yeah. games. Yeah, and and like Flight of the Navigator, there there's trauma there. Like the kid disappears for like seven years or some crap like that. And his family had to go through this whole you know, like where's our son? You know, where's yeah. my brother? Like, you know, missing child and they had to mourn his loss and what whatnot. And then he just appears later, like no time passed for him. Yeah. Uh, physically or mentally, like he doesn't remember, like he thought he was gone for like 10 minutes or something. He didn't age at all, uh, but it, every, the world had moved on and and his family had moved on, you know, mourning his death and all of that. And then he reappears. And like that aspect alone makes that movie inferior to The Last Starfighter. <laughs> 
Like, Kent, Kent's all about the hot blonde next door. Let's not do with the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the blondes yes. no to trauma. Blondes, blondes, Trump trauma. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna submit that as a uh, as a title here. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. Um, if you need to know any more about the Last Starfighter, then clearly you need to watch the Last Starfighter. That's yeah. That's th- th- yes. Out of all of these movies, like that is. Th- th- I think that's the wreck coming out of, out of yeah. this one. Yeah, uh, but we that's do. What we, we want our audience to to see. We do have awesome. one more movie though, and that is the third one on your list: Boys in the Hood. Yes. So this is uh, the 1991 uh, breakout film for uh, John Singleton as a director mm-hmm. and for Ice Cube as an actor. Um, Ice Cube is anything other than a rapper. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this this movie also like based on uh, John Singleton's uh, mentorship also contributed to um, Ice Cube becoming a writer, which dr- led directly to Friday being a thing and um um all all of that um this movie is 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 historically significant uh for you know like in the annals of filmmaking um but for me in particular this movie like i said came out in 1991 so i probably saw it for the first time in like 92 because i didn't go to the theater to see this Mm -hmm. um but i quickly fell in love with this movie and i don't at the time i don't think i realized why um but like in retrospect, I think the reason that I that I liked this movie so much, I mean, other than just the simple fact that that it is well crafted, it is a wonderful, um, wonderful, uh, wonderfully told story. The acting is amazing. Uh, the cinematography is great. Everything about it is is very high quality. Um, but the the story itself, you know, I'm a I'm a, a white kid from rural Indiana. The movie is about is about um, urban Los Angeles um, black experience, like black youth experience, yep. uh, which couldn't be any more opposite from my experience. Right. Uh, but I think, like in retrospect, I think that is what attracted me to this uh, because it is it is American experience that this American kid had no knowledge or understanding of this is almost and, this is almost a documentary for you at that time like this is there, there's yes. there's so much experience and knowledge and um uh just an idea like a paradigm shift that you hadn't had any any interaction with at all that this was I mean, it's a fictional story, but there's so much there that you might as well there's be so watching. There's so much truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fictional characters, but it's it's truth. Like, it's speaking truth of experience. Right. Um, and so I had listened to gangster rap prior to seeing this movie. Um, so I knew who Ice Cube was. I, I Like, I was one of those white junior high kids that liked uh, NWA, NWA. <laughs> you know, um, and Public Enemy and, like, you know, a few other um, – uh, rap artists, but um, I liked it more for the the music, like the you know the actual sound of it, and also um, I was very much attracted to the subversiveness of it. Right. You know, like um, I I used to hide my tapes from my parents because I would be in trouble if I was caught listening to NWA. Like, there's <laughs> no way. Like, I always listen to it. With headphones on. <laughs> I can't imagine your mom walking in your room and picking up, you know, fuck the police and being like, right. oh, this is nice. Okay, go ahead, honey. Yeah, this is acceptable. <laughs> like, no, like, not, no. So I, I very much hid that. And, and I think, yeah, the first is probably what um, attracted us to it. But I also listened to the words. And I, you know, I was one of those kids that always read the liner notes in the, you know, the insert in the cassette tape. Right, mm-hmm. and later in, in DVDs or uh, CDs, CDs yeah. rather. Yeah. Um, so I knew what the lyrics were saying, but I didn't. I I didn't really have an understanding of of what, like. You didn't. You I didn't have. You didn't have any context to match those with experience. Exactly. Yeah. Like like the whole like the fuck the police thing. Like, I was very much under the impression that like all cops help all people. Like. 
that's how I was brought up. That was my personal experience. Like my grandpa was a cop. Um, my personal experience was the police were there to help you or to, um, you know, take care of bad guys. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I was very much, you know, there's good guys and there's bad guys, you know, and, um, gangster rap really was the first, like the first, um, time I was exposed to the idea that cops could be the bad guys. Um, and, but it was just kind of a, like a, uh, like a concept, I guess, in my head until I saw this movie, until I saw boys in the hood and like saw visual depiction of this and, uh, had a layer of context on, on like, you know, the, the existence of like police harassment and, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and how that affects, you know, the people that, that, um, uh, that, you know, that experience that, you know, right. and, um, the, you know, and being targeted simply because of the color of your skin and, and there's so many different like angles because you've got, um, um, Lawrence Fishburne playing furious styles, Trey's dad. And he is like this, uh, you know, philosopher basically. Uh, and his perspective on, on everything that goes on, um, like he's, he's basically like the mentor of the movie and his character in particular, uh, like acted as like the teacher, mm -hmm. to me, like explaining, you know, how, how things are, why they are, what's wrong with the, with, with the fact that it's that way and, and what can be done done maybe or the futility of of, of, of action yeah of, yeah and all of that sort of stuff and it's just a very very profound movie and i've, I've seen it probably 20 times i'm, I'm guessing ha, have you seen colors um honestly i don't think i have i would recommend watching colors because okay. it, it, it focuses less on the the neighborhood and the, um, the, 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 the community, but focuses more on the divisions between people within that community based on colors. You know, it's basically bloods and crips. Um, it's not as, it wouldn't be as profound because it, especially now you understand more about it, but it still gives a certain balance and a certain understanding to why things are the way they are amongst the community that you and I are never, never going to be part of. Like we just, we right. just, we, we're not that, you know, we, we aren't that, how, how to say this without pissing 500 million people off. Um, <laughs> we're not black, so we're never going to experience and full under, fully understand that experience of being black. Of course, um, right. But colors is another thing where it's, you can hope to achieve some measure of understanding through other people, through the depiction of other people's experiences. Mm. So um, don't, don't uh, make sure you go into that movie with a clear mind. <clears throat> Cause it'll make you hate everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's rough. Oh man, yeah. All right. Um. So, out of all these movies, man, I th I think Last Starfighter is our suggestion. However, if you want to be enlightened, Boys in the Hood. Um, if you want to, sure. if if you want to be enlightened, watch Boys watch Boys in the Hood. If you want to just have a good story told in a really good way, uh, very eighties ish, Last Starfighter. If you're looking for some action, Born Identity. If you're looking for some uh, some uh, 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 some semi chub uh, <laughs> ro romance, uh, the girl next door. Uh, if you're looking yeah. for uh, people bridging the divide, go with Enemy Mine. And if you just want to laugh at stupid shit, Caveman. <laughs> that sounds that sounds right. Yeah. I'll only add that if you want to understand me and Amos on a deeper level, Last Starfighter. <laughs> yeah 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 no shit um hey man it's uh it's about time for a new segment yes i think i think bbj has something to say about it one city one city one forecast one forecast 
One word. It's Ritual Misery's One Word Weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. Today's forecast for Abuja, Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria, 75 and cloudy. Yep. Uh, <laughs> apologies, this is a new segment. We have not uh, practiced it. Um, yeah, dude, have you ever have you ever even been on the continent of Africa? Because I have not. I've been very close to Africa, but I've never actually been on the continent. Uh, but Nigeria, um, it's 75 and cloudy there. Sounds like good weather to me. I... Hmm. No. No. You had to think long and hard about that. Because I've been very close to it several times, and I had to like think in my head exactly where that is in relation to the continent of Africa. Right. Um... In South Southwest Asia, I've been to like lots of like all like just like you like all over the place over there like you know right. Uh, yeah. I haven't been to Oman, but I've been to UAE, which is right next door, so that kind of counts. And Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, um, Iraq. Um, been that whole that whole area there, um, and I was supposed to go to Djibouti once, and that that got canceled because of um, issues. Uh, but I was supposed to go there to look at their at their classified reporting. Um, but yeah, that was no. That I don't. I don't. I don't. I've never been. Uh, I've flown over parts of the uh, of like we flew over Egypt. It was too dark to mm. see anything, but we flew over Egypt. Um, but no, I've, that's that's it. Going from uh, from Spain to Qatar, I think we flew over Egypt. Yeah. So no. So, um... So the the point of this segment, though, is to promote the podcast. What is it about the weather from our our dear friend, Mark Jelinek? Um, it's fantastic. Um, we we gave a weather forecast, which is something that Mark actually doesn't do on his weather podcast. He talks about pretty much everything except for the weather itself. Yep. Uh, it's it's uh, his tagline is there's much more about the weather than the weather itself. And it talks about um, pretty much every way that weather affects everything else and it's it's fantastic so uh, we're, we're not we're not that good and we're not that smart so we just pick a random city each week we're gonna pick a random city and give you a, uh, a basically a one word uh, forecast for that city yep because why the fuck not exactly. Why not? And uh, I think I think uh, in the future we're gonna be we're gonna be um, doing similar bits for other shows as well, um, folks that we yeah. adore, uh, not just them but also the the content that they produce, and we think that they should have a wider audience. So we're, this, we're gonna do our part. This section here was actually uh, so we can we can finally break it out. We can finally tell, finally tell people there was an episode, and our Patreon version of the episode went over two hours and like 23 minutes. And at the two hours, 22 minutes and 22 second mark, I said, if you will email us, and this is locking, locking out anybody else, by the way. Uh, if you email us in, with the subject line 2 colon 2 2 colon 2 2, we will, the, if one person does it, we'll give them a, something special. We'll do something special for them. If two people do it, we'll do something special for both of you because it's two. If any more than that do it, though, we will stop. I'm locking it out now. It's been about six months, and no one else has listened to that episode and found that spot and sent us that email. <laughs> the two people that did were Stephen Cogswell, which he now uh, uh, sponsors the game, and Mark Jelinek, who now gets a segment of Random One Word Weather. Uh, for for his reward for listening to two hours twenty two minutes and twenty two seconds of us, yes, that is some dedication. Yes. Uh. So, uh, 
more contests in the future if we ever have another exceptionally long episode things like that we, we you know we'll 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 snip that stuff in there meanwhile uh we we would like to do uh occasional segments for other people that have contributed to ritual misery and contributed to the streamathon and done things such as that so keep an ear out and we will uh we'll, we'll be we'll keep going with this yeah yeah um uh, speaking of of people that we like and uh content that we enjoy uh a few months back, uh, November, I think, October, November, we had Christoph Zajac Denick from I'm Kind of a Big Deal podcast mm-hmm. on our show. And he was not only a fan favorite, he was one of my favorite guests, probably of all time. And uh, I invited him back, and he's going to be our guest next week. Yep. That's going to be awesome. He uh, His show, uh, I'm Kind of a Big Deal, just opened up on season, was it season two now? Season two. Yeah. Yep. He's about three episodes in, I think, on season two. So he's two, uh, he's in He's in the second season, and now he's doing like all the Instagrams, and he's got the Twitters, and he's got the, the little snippets, and the and all, he's doing all the things that that we don't do. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm looking forward to having him back on. I'm not sure exactly what our topic is going to be yet, um, but um, we have some. We ideas. interviewed him last time. Yeah, we've got some ideas. Uh, we interviewed him properly last time, so we're not going to do another interview show. Right. Uh, we're just going to do a fun topic. Um, so to be announced later, but it, I guarantee it's going to be a blast. So. Yep. Definitely join us for for that episode. Check us out next week to see how many times Amos can put his foot in his mouth. That episode. <laughs> oh, that's pretty standard when we have a guest. Because yeah, that most certainly happened. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, so check us out um, live on twitch.tv slash ritual misery on uh, what, 4 p.m. Pacific now on Sundays? There, I just updated the reader for you. Yes. While while, uh, while you were reading it. <laughs> yes, 4 p.m. Pacific on uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Yeah, excellent. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming by and hanging out with us. And uh, yeah, I'm going to hit the button. Let the music slowly creep in. Give you a little yeah. AM, Check us, ASMR. Check out all of our stuff on ritualmisery.com. Yeah. RitualMisery.com It's awesome You should do that For Kent, for me, for you This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast See ya Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Yeah, buddy. Good stuff. Yeah. What okay. should we call it? That was fun. Oh, we only have one title suggestion. Yeah. Um, Blonde's Trump Trauma. Um, if you guys have a suggestion, go ahead and get it in now, because otherwise that's going to be our title. Um, unless you do, you have something else, Amos? You got a, nope. you got a title suggestion? No. Nope. No, nope. I had one, but it was along the same lines, and now I forgot what it was because yours was better. So fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, rmp.showbot.tv is where you go to vote. It's kind of pointless right now because there's only one title. Um, I mean, you could go there and vote and just show your show your support of Kent's uh, naming ability. Yeah, there you go. That works.